Hey everybody, it's Retro DM Ray back on the channel with you. And you know what? I just wanted to uh, read something to you here that I have been reading through myself recently in preparation for what I hope will be a really cool game with some um, really old uh, college friends um, and longtime buddies um, in first edition Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Um, and that is um, that we are taking a look through Osric, the core rules, uh, 2.2. Um, that is the latest update that they have on the Knights and Knaves website uh, for Osric. And what Osric is, is the, o the OGL, or Open Gaming License, um, version of uh, a compilation, more concisely done, I think, of first edition Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm going to use the Player's Handbook and the DMG for first edition Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, but this book happens to bring everything together, and it's free to download, and it's such a thing that you could share with your players in your game so they can take a look at it, especially in a, in a distance, um, to at least become familiar with what we used to be able to play back in the old days. Um, to try to get yourself back acclimated to uh, first edition if you've been away from it for a while. So this is in the afterword. So of course Matt Finch was directly involved with Osric, obviously, um, but this is Stuart, Stuart Marshall. He was the main person, um, as well as so many others that he thanks in the beginning of this uh, Osric compilation. Um, he doesn't list them, he just thanks everybody that were heavily involved and there was a lot of them as he says. But he says this in the afterword about the book and I think it's really cool, it stands out to me. So here we go. As is traditional with RPGs, I suppose I should finish the Osric rules with a few words of advice for the newer player, and particularly for the newer GM. At this point, it's traditional to remind players that the DM can change or ignore any rule whatsoever, as he or she sees fit or on a whim, with or without giving a reason. Please consider yourself reminded. And the traditional advice for GMs is the same here too. Never follow a rule over a cliff. Please do follow this advice, it'll improve your game. Having said that, I can go on to say the things I really want to say in the afterward. They are first, play Osric fast. Part of the beauty of this system is, with a little knowledge and practice, you can run a battle between 10 player characters with a dozen hirelings and a henchman, and a handful of summoned monsters on one side and 30 ogres with a shaman and two dozen wargs on the other, and you can resolve it in 30 minutes flat. It helps to roll dice in handfuls, but the big things that make that possible are the simplicity of the combat rules and morale. Don't forget morale, it's important. It's for skipping over the boring bits. The moment it becomes obvious to intelligent monsters that they'll lose a fight, they will run or surrender. And this brings me to the second thing, which is, please do skip over the boring bits. Fudge things to make them faster. And if they can't be fudged, then the GM and the players should share jobs fairly if the party's using detailed encumbrance rules, then the GM shouldn't have to do all the bean counting. After all, the GM is busy doing GM-like things, such as drinking, that's so vital to his or her concentration, or laughing cruelly at the player's latest mistake, and so has no time to do math. The third thing is, in Osric, generating a player character is fast. If you die, it's quick and easy as a job to roll up a new character and get straight back into the action, which means that dying isn't so much of a pain in the neck as it might be with other systems. Assume you will lose some player characters from time to time and plan accordingly. Once you're past the first few levels, most players should accumulate a few henchmen who can replace their main character if the main character dies, or is petrified, disintegrated, converted to green slime, swallowed whole by some huge monster, falls into a sphere of annihilation, or, well, Osric's a dangerous world. Lots of things can happen. <laughs> I love that. If you die and fail your resurrection chance, deal with it with good grace. Sure, nobody likes to lose a character, but don't take it too seriously. This is a game. In Osric, you aren't entitled to be the hero. Boom, I love that statement. You might just get to be the hero, but don't expect it as a right. Wow. Hands down, the two best statements in this whole entire thing, beyond the fact that the GM, and I would say Dungeon Master, can change the rules and throw them out or ignore them anytime he or she sees fit on a whim without even giving a reason, um, although I think that you should do that fairly and impartially. Um, I don't think he implies that you would do otherwise, um, but those are the two great statements. And then here comes another one in a minute. If you die and fail your resurrection chance, deal with it with good grace. Okay. Then he says, and there's a fourth thing. Make sure everyone around the table gets a chance to have their say, but don't tolerate dithering. If your GM asks you, what do you do now? Then you'd better answer at once or expect to lose your opportunity. The fifth and last thing is, your GM isn't called a storyteller for a reason. 
he or she isn't telling a story with you cast as the protagonist. If you want that, try one of White Wolf's games. Yeah, absolutely right. The GM creates a world. You create a character who wants something. It's up to you to go out and get it. Story is the result of the game, not a process within it. Have fun, Stuart Marshall. I think this, that's just, I mean, that's some really good stuff stated right there. That entitlement piece wow, that can walk and talk for a long ways um, in relation to um, present gaming. Um, and we'll just leave it at that. But I hope you enjoyed this little snippet of the coverage of Osric the Core Rules 2.2. Um, if you like the channel, please again, give me a thumbs up, give me a like, subscribe, share with your friends. Um, it's always G-rated. Um, and uh, just want to give a shout out to my buddies, um, Rod and Ryan and Ack. Hey dudes, um, glad to have you on board. Um, looking forward to the game here soon. And uh, thanks Mage's Musings for giving me some input here recently. A little bit of insight into uh, what's going to happen with that. I appreciate that too. And as always, I appreciate all of you that comment um, and like, subscribe, and share. Thanks again. Hey, whatever you do, man, like Guy Gax used to always say in his Dungeon Articles, Dragon Magazine Articles, I mean, prosper and good gaming. Take care. Later.